Welcome back to Comic Culture. That's Pastor Mark. I'm Andy. Hey, we're talking about, last week we were talking about what if God uh, actually stopped our church service and said, hey, you, you're getting it wrong. Stop it. Let's get it right. right. Let's get it right. Right <clears throat> now, uh, we are in uh, 2 Samuel chapter 6, and we, we got to the part where God stops David's worship. God stops the whole the whole parade. Man, just boom, we're done. Uzzah dies, right? Uh, not because he was intentionally doing something wrong. He was actually set up, right? He was walking beside the cart, and he went to stabilize it because it was rocking, and he probably didn't even know it was supposed to be on poles. Maybe he did, but he paid the price, right? And then you read to us that David reacted to God. I, I love I love this because I think it would be me. If if God stopped our worship service, do you think our first reaction would be to bend our knees, humble ourselves, and respond to God? Or would it be more like David where we get angry, we throw a fit, and we stop David, worshiping? They would say, hey, it's not in the order of service, which I don't put in, I don't put that out anymore because I'm like, right. you know why I don't? Because I'm like, maybe God is going to do something different. What if God did do something different, right? But here, but David's reaction wasn't to humble himself and seek God and figure out what was wrong. His reaction was he got angry and then he was doing this for you, God. <laughs> exactly. He refuses to go on. Mm -hmm. He refuses. He's like, done, done with the parade. Not going to try to figure out how to get it right. What happened? We're just done. Right? I wonder if there are churches that would do that. If the, if the worship service got stopped by God and interrupted, would we, A, just try to press through and run over God? That would be a bad idea, I think. Right? Would we, B, just be like, okay, we're done for today. It's just not going to work. The enemy's just attacking. He's just working really hard, and we're just done. Like, it's just not going to happen today. Or, or is there a chance that we would actually respond to God, humble ourselves, seek his face, repent, and move forward. Which one of those do you think would happen in your church, Pastor Mark? Probably we would not stop. Say, God, what's going on here? We would be like, wait a minute here. This isn't, I got to be out of here because I'm, I want to beat the people from your church to the restaurant. See, now I would be much more <clears throat> spiritual in nature, right? I would immediately assume that it was attacked by the enemy and we need to just press through. That's it. We need to press on. Don't let him stop That's us. That's right. We are right. not stopping. We're marching Keep to singing. Zion. That's right. Keep singing. We're going. Right. Right. And, and then. Care if your Uncle Pecos and your guitar string broke up. I, I remember a story about that. Wasn't that Balaam and the donkey where he keeps trying to make the donkey go forward? Beating him like a red board. And, and then finally the donkey has to talk to him. Now, I'm not saying that there are any donkeys in my church, but somebody, I have a feeling, would probably talk to me. At some point, somebody would be like, Andy, can't, can't you see this is a God thing? I would hope, right? But, but I, I tell you, we, we would immediately probably assume we're being attacked. Mm -hmm. right? We're being attacked. The enemy doesn't want... Man, we are worshiping so great, the enemy doesn't want us to keep moving forward. So we got to do it. Man, the pastor must be going to bring the greatest sermon ever. Right, like, and, and the enemy just stopped us, right? But there is that third option of what if we stopped, humbled ourselves, and sought God, right? So if we look at... Well, unfortunately, we shouldn't have to stop and seek God. Hopefully, we're doing it from the beginning. Yes, that's the whole point, right? If we get it right, we don't have to. Is this, did, I just, did I just... Did you just steal it? I just steal no, the we just, think alike. we just think alike. We just think alike. You're just... You're on the same. <laughs> okay. Listen, I let you read last time, so let me let you finish up the story. That would be appropriate. I'm still trying to reel from us thinking alike. I know. <laughs> there ain't a person on this planet that really wants to be in this brain. Really, truly. Right? That's just Okay. All right, verse 12. Here we go. Finish up this section, 12 through uh, 15. Oh, am I, am I? Okay. You're on. And, and, and we're back. Now King David was told, Yeah. The Lord has blessed the house of Obed-Edom, and everything he has because the ark of God, uh, because of the ark of God. So David went down and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. When those who were carrying the ark of the Lord uh, had taken six steps, he sacrificed a bull and a fattened calf. David, wearing a linen ephod, danced before the Lord with all his might. 
while he and his entire house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouts and the sound of trumpets. All right, so beautiful. So so here's what happens, and this is a frequent thing within church, right? There are those churches, there are those people that actually respond to God. God blesses. Everybody else watches and goes, oh, wait, no, 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 no. I want to be a part of this. Like, I want to do it. I want to do it now. Come on, God, I want to do it now. It's funny, growing up, uh, how many times that happens to you as a kid, right? You don't want anything to do with something until you see the fun that people are having. And you're like, oh, I want to do it now. I want to do it now. Please, mommy, can I do it now? Right? Uh, this This is the same thing. God blesses, right, the house. What God wanted was for David to humble himself and do it right. But David didn't. He threw a hissy fit and he left the ark and somebody got blessed because the Holy Spirit didn't go anywhere. Holy Spirit was right there, ready to work, ready to do things. And and so a, a household gets blessed. David sees that and goes, okay, now I'm in. Only this time, David did it right. Right? This time, he did it the way that it was supposed to be. Right? People were bearing the ark, carrying it on poles like they were supposed to, not putting it in a cart. And David's worship was different in nature it was now what i want to say obedient worship there is a difference between sincere and obedient worship and just worship you can do both with all your might you and i have seen concerts secular concerts where people are worshiping and they're worshiping with all of their might a band a song whatever it is they are going crazy but, but that's that's not the kind of worship we're talking about. We're talking about obedient, sincere worship where we're doing things the right way. We're in the right place with God. Now I'm waiting upon your great... Well, I'm thinking about what you were saying about you know, David. Oh, now I want a piece of the action. How many people do that? Well, they forget that the big church was a small church at one time. And mm-hmm. people paid a price... To get it to place, but they come. Well, we just want to, you know, we just want to come in and because we are consumers. Yep. And I challenge my church: don't be a consumer, be a contributor. Mm-hmm. You can be both, but you gotta. Many people don't want to be contributors. They just want to come in, be entertained, mm-hmm. or have it done for them. I don't really want to put anything into this. Yep. Yep. I remember one year that uh, someone, you know, someone said, "We're gonna have VBS." I said, well, "Okay, but let's." put up the list and see what kind of response we had two people sign up to help with it and i said well then we're not having it and i had one dear saint say well we got a vbs we i said well how many i mean are you going to commit for the week well i can commit to two days i said you can't have vbs committing to two days you got to commit to the whole thing well i can't do that i said well that's why we're not having it rick warren did that with saddleback Uh he said we ain't having the ministry if we don't have someone to lead it yeah. That's not a bad thing because then it's it's led poorly or it's not led it's not. In, in the right spirit yeah. of obedience and wanting to do what God wants us to do. Yeah, I love that. I love so that. to humble ourselves is the key. Yeah. To come and say, wait a minute, God, I, I did mess up. I had no right. I, I shouldn't have gotten upset because I, you know, it, well, you weren't doing things my way. We all want God to do things our way. That's why we pray. Mm-hmm. We don't pray your will be done. Lord, do it my way is how we pray. My will be done. My will be and done. And you like it, God. Please. Yes, yes. Please like, please put your stamp of approval on my prayer. Yeah. We, I, and we do that with our worship. We this do. is, you know, this is what we need to do. I had somebody right. say to me, you know, one time, well, you know, we have great worship. I don't understand why people are coming. They said, well, how are they going to know? I said, we got to go out and we got to talk to people. And not just about a worship. This one used to drive me crazy, too. It was such a great service. The pastor didn't even preach. <laughs> you know, what is the message there? Oh, we don't need the word. We don't need to hear the word expound upon what we sang. We got, oh, it was wonderful. We felt good about it. We felt good about it. It was a great concert, wasn't it? It was a fantastic concert. We honored God so well. Yes. And God cares about so much. God, God moved in that music, and He didn't even need to hear. The, we didn't need to hear the word or the preaching. God cares about sincerity, and He cares about obedience, right? In our right, worship. just like Linus and his pumpkin patch. Nothing but sincerity, as far as the eye can see. What if God came into our worship service and said nothing but sincerity, as far as the eye can see? Yeah, I think He'd stop it pretty quick. If God's if he if, saw sincerity, it, no. If God walked into our an average church service and he's like, "I need to see nothing but sincerity." <clears throat> yeah. Do you think that we'd get more than three words into a song? Uh, I don't know. I, me- I you know. I remember a story I heard when I was. 
first got saved, the guy was telling me, he was a guy, an old saint in the church, was telling me a story about a, a guy who had died and gone to heaven. And, and, and Jesus said, hey, what do you want to do? He goes, can we go down and see what's going on in my church on this Sunday morning? Jesus says, yeah. So they get down there and he's watching people, singing and everything else. And he's like, Jesus, I, I don't hear anything. He goes, how come I can't hear anything? And Jesus says, we only hear what's done in the spirit up here. Oh, wow. Wow. See, God would stop the service. No worship's getting to him. Do you think that's true today? That there are churches that are worshiping like crazy with all their might and none of it's getting through. Are, are, are we the prophets of Baal? Ooh. Dancing, doing all slashing. sorts of dog, slashing, doing all sorts of dog and pony show things and still saying, God, what do you want to do? And yet Elijah, one sincere prayer gets through. Yeah. And fire from heaven. Oh, you could preach that. Do you think that's why God sent 120 people to an upper room and said, wait for the Holy Spirit? And do you think what he was waiting for was sincerity? So, this Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. Pentecost Sunday. Again. What if? Oh, my goodness. What if it was a Do bus? we have the faith to do? We say, we're going to wait till the Holy Spirit comes. We'll be waiting a long time. Some people need to get ready. Some people need to get ready. Oh, my goodness. You want to do it? Oh, God help us. I can't wait to text you Saturday. <laughs> Sunday morning. I'm going to be texting you. Are we doing it? Wow. And you, you, oh, oh, so now I'm oh, taking it to another level. We go up and we don't say a word. Huh? We don't say a word and see if anybody knows it's Pentecost Sunday. Because we usually don't emphasize Pentecost. Yeah. We just wait. Just wait. Oh, we my pray. goodness. State of prayer. Oh, my goodness. See, now. These are the times that try men's souls. See, and get pastors stuck. fired. That's exactly what I'm thinking. <laughs> you and I might be jobless after. We might be doing our, our next. Hey, supposedly all the pastors that are leaving churches, we should be able to find one. We might need to start our, our own. We might. We might. The Church of Counterculture. Church of what's happening now. Okay. Ooh, the Church of Counterculture, better known the as Church the Church of, of the Ark in now. Park. There we go. We put the Ark in we Park. We put the Ark in Park. <laughs> Somehow we just digressed from a really cool spiritual stop moment to Ark in Park. Hey, it's a good place to leave counterculture. They're going to all be thinking, everybody who's watching is going to be going, what did they do? What did they do? What did they do? You're going to have to turn into church services to see what we did. Oh, gosh, now the gears are turning. Lord, what are you doing? All right. All right. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> it should be an exciting next counterculture. Right. As we, we check out and see what it is that God did. We'll see you next time. Grace and peace. <laughs>